Hello everybody. Um, welcome back. Um, thank you for um, your support uh, from uh, the team of All or None Law. Please keep subscribing. Please keep supporting us. Your uh, valuable feedback will be really appreciated. Today uh, I'm going to talk about pulmonary embolism. This is probably the, one of the most important topic in medicine because it's one of the common cause of sudden death after coronary artery disease that either is undiagnosed or remains unclear. And most of the sudden deaths uh, um, post autopsy uh, are considered to be caused by pulmonary embolism. So I will go uh, with just some salient points as usual, not going in detail. Um, so what do we need to know? Pulmonary embolism, clinical features, symptoms, you know, People presents, uh, uh, present with uh, either with chest pain that is pleuritic. Shortness of breath is another next common symptom. Um, sometimes people can present with passing or syncope and that can be a really dangerous symptom. So chest pain, shortness of breath or syncope is probably the most common encountered um, symptoms. Weakness can also be considered but very rare. As far as signs, um, I think just tachycardia is probably the most common clinical sign or clue. Unexplained tachycardia would be the thing that to look for. Otherwise, on examination or uh, there's nothing specific that is particularly to pulmonary embolism. ECG, as you may recall, uh, there are very specific signs for a diagnosis of pulmonary embolism, but none clearly can confirm the diagnosis. But there are certain things that can be helpful. That is sinus tachycardia, probably the most sensitive sign or a positive sign in a PE. Something that you should know from an examination point of view is presence of right heart stain, which is either in the form of right axis deviation, right bundle branch block. Uh, would be a sign of a severe or a mass submassive pulmonary embolism. Another classically you know, historically thought uh, sine qua non of pulmonary embolism is S1, Q3, T3 pattern. There is presence of deep S wave in lead one, a presence of an abnormal Q wave in lead three and an inverted T wave in lead three as well. This is seen only in 25% of uh, patients with pulmonary embolism. So not common. If you see it, get excited because that's kind of rare. Chest X-ray may be clear, and that's why you end up diagnosing PE on special testing. And I think the most useful testing is CAT scan with intravenous contrast, a CT scan, which is used most commonly to diagnose this condition. Um, D-dimer is not diagnostic, but if it is negative and somebody presenting with suspected PE has more value that it may not be PE, but if it is positive, it does not mean patient really has PE. The absolute gold standard is pulmonary angiogram where you can put in the catheter, shoot the dye and look at the pictures. Other thing to remember also is VQ scanning. So somebody who is allergic to IV dye so that they cannot get a CAT scan, then think about VQ scanning. Coming to treatment options. So once you diagnose somebody with pulmonary embolism, you need to Categorize this pulmonary embolism into four different things. And I can tell you by get-go that the third type, that is peripheral PE, is probably the most common type of pulmonary embolism that you encounter. And most of the treatment is probably well-established for peripheral pulmonary embolism. Then comes mass UPE, sub mass UPE, and chronic thromboembolic PE. I will explain to you what exactly these terms mean. Massive pulmonary embolism means somebody who has got such huge clot that is the pulmonary embolus is sitting at the bifurcation of the pulmonary trunk causing sudden death. This will be demonstrated clinically by a patient presenting with hypotension in presence of PE. This is cause of sudden death as discussed and uh, the best treatment for this is mechanical thrombolysis. I'm going to discuss the treatment in the next slide. 
sub massive pe is a very controversial topic so that means this is uh, something which is not painful but not massive in between so how do you define this entity and there are various categories various uh, techniques to define this but one thing that i want you to remember is this if a patient with pe has evidence of right heart strain either on the ecg or on blood test by a positive troponin or a elevated b type np or most importantly an echocardiographic sign of right heart strain where right ventricular wall is not moving well that is what is sub massu pe the reason that is important to know this entity is this entity is at a very high risk for massu pe and sudden death but at the same time there is a lot of controversy in how we should treat it and i'll go to this in the next slide then the third one is as i'm discussing here the most common type peripheral pulmonary embolism where you just diagnose this on a cat scan patient is doing fine sitting there maybe some symptoms may not sometimes be any symptoms and you want to uh treat this the last entity is the chronic thromboembolic pulmonary embolism this entity is very difficult to diagnose extremely rare condition this is pulmonary embolism in peripheral small arteries and the only treatment for this would be surgical correction so as long as you remember peripheral pe massu pe and sub massu pe that will serve the purpose let's look at the options that are available to treat somebody with diagnosed with pulmonary embolism so you have all the anticoagulants i think for the last 60 years we have only had only one option that is warfarin heparin or low molecular weight heparins are only used to bridge because once you start somebody on warfarin it will take at least a few days to start working uh um, so truly for the last 60 years uh, the medication that was ruling the world was warfarin but most recently thanks to the research in medicine um two new medications were approved both in europe and america that is dabigatran as well as rivaroxaban now dabigatran is a direct thrombin inhibitor and rivaroxaban is a anti 10a inhibitor the advantage of these medications uh, is the fact that you don't need monitoring as you need for warfarin drug drug interactions as you know warfarin is the king that's not the case with these drugs they're easily reversible and they are more and more being used now as evidence based medicine has proved that this is the best treatment the other treatment option available is tpa that is tissue plasminogen activator as you remember classically used in acute myocardial infarction in centers where they cannot do cardiac catheterization this should and must be only used in patients with massu pe so remember massu pe is people with pe and hemodynamic instability in the form of hypotension hypoxia sick looking patients and there is controversy whether to use this strategy or not in sub massu pe and that's where the confusion comes you don't need to remember all that but as long as you remember that tpa is for an only massu pe will serve the purpose ivc filter that is placement of a mechanical filter or like a sieve in the inferior vena cava is an option which is alternative to people who cannot get anticoagulation there are some contraindications either in the form of they are prone to bleeding and this comes across all the time or just anticoagulating them coagulating them with warfarin may not be enough other option available is mechanical thrombolysis that is where you use a catheter go to the site where the clot is identify it and lyse it and this also once again you know used for mass pulmonary embolism surgical option is also there which is very rarely used probably in mass general harvard where it is practiced in somebody with massu pe very advanced centers only can do this and it's very high risk so friends although i did not cover everything in pe but as long as you remember what are the signs and symptoms of pulmonary embolism salient features on examination ecg the utility of cat scan 
what are the types? Remember massive PE, submassive PE, and peripheral PE. Chronic thromboembolic PE is rare. And the treatment options available, warfarin, warfarin was there for the last 60 years, but now two new drugs, dabigatron, rivaroxaban. IVC filter for people who cannot take these medications and for people with massive PE, there is TPA and those are mechanical thrombolysis. Hope this helps. Would love to hear your feedbacks.